Hi, we are Signal, a plugin for Figma which can export your designs to page Elementor in lightning speed. To get you interested, you can work on your website with us like this. But before that, you need to do a little preparation. Now I'll tell you about everything in order. The first thing we need is the license. We have a one week free version of the plugin, as well as an annual and monthly subscription. After purchasing on the website, you will receive an email with an activation code. Enter in the license panel in the plugin and it will be activated. We also need a subscription to Elementor. You can read about them on their website. You can also go there from our website with this button. Auto layout. Create a frame with the button or hotkey F. Let's make it imprecise for now. Then let's concentrate on the panel on the right. At the top, near the alignment panel, there is an option to change the height and width of our frame. Let's make it full HD. Now let's sign out a frame and make its name be the name of JSON file with export in design. In fact, it will serve as a skeleton for our page. Now let's go down to the middle of the panel and click the plus sign next to auto layout. Auto layout allows you to set the exact distances between the elements, how they will be held in the middle of the containers and so on. We need to set the top center and the vertical direction of the auto layout. Without this, the export won't work. Let's start with the navigation menu. Let's create a frame. I'll set it to 1512 pixels wide. Of course, you can set any width for your frame. Now let's add auto layout to the frame. Center it, set the width to fixed so that our frame does not shrink when inserting elements. We recommended signing all frames and design components for consistency and clarity. I will label this frame as header, for example. Add a vector logo. We don't need to create a frame for it. Figma will do it automatically. Now I'm going to create menu items. In my design, these are global, clicked, color, and text. This text will not be directly transferred to the Elementor, so you don't have to focus on the names of the items. I'll also group our items into auto layout. Now I'll group the buttons into an auto layout and sign it as nav in square brackets. Another important thing is that the actual names of the menu items will be taken from the WordPress. We enter the name of our WordPress menu after the nav and the element will be pulled into the Elementor, along with nesting and captions. What else can we customize for the nav menu in the Figma? Button states. The color of the first button is the global color. The color of the second is the color of active state. And the color of the third is the color on color. We will adjust the indents from the edge for the logo and navigation. I will put a flexible distance between the logo and the menu for better responsiveness. You can set a fixed one. Now let's group our header, create a template. To do this, we will set the auto layout with top center alignment and vertical direction. Now 
Now let's export our template. I'll cut out the template loading part so it doesn't take up too much time. As you can see, the names of the navigation components were uploaded from the WordPress menu template. The hover and the active state work flawlessly. Another important note. Now we worked in the page called test1 and added this page to the navigation menu so the active state is working. Let's now upload our header to the page, which is not listed in the menu. The active state does not work because this page is not in the menu template itself. Everything else works the same as in test one. Next in line are two very similar widgets, image box and icon box. Image box allows us to combine images and text, for example, for block cards. Let's look at an example. We have a frame with an auto layout and this labeled as an icon box. The auto layout can be both vertical and horizontal, depending on which card you want. It can also be signed as an image box, and the signal will automatically change the type of the widget depending on whether it's an image or a vector. We can put an, an image box only one image, a header and the main text. The image can be rounded if necessary. The icon box works almost the same way, except that we use vectors instead of images. We recommended not to put them in groups or frames. Then the percentage of correct recognition will be very high. Now, export our widgets to the Elementor. I will speed up the export process by cutting the loading template. As you can see, our image boxes exported perfectly. The vectors on the icon boxes are missing. Don't worry, just press Ctrl S to save the page and then reload it. The icons will appear. Counter. The counter widget is set up as follows. Let's look at an example. First we have a frame template. Then we have a section with text and another frame on it. Now we see our counters. For each number we set a different counter, creating a frame with the counter's signature in square brackets. The first text in the frame will be animated. The following ones will be like regular text. Now, let's move on to the mentor. The animation will take place from null to the inscribed value. We can also set the separator. Space, period, underscore, or apostrophe. You can further customize the counter directly in the elementor if necessary. Now, let's look at the Google Maps widget. To create it, you need to make a frame with an auto layout of the size you need. You can set it to be rounded if necessary. Next, we sign our frame in the following steps. First, write the word map in square brackets. Second, next, write the location. It can be the exact coordinates, address, name of place, etc. Third, write the zoom you need. First write the letter Z, and then a number from 1 to 20. Now let's see how it will work in the Elementor. As you can see, the shapes of our frames have been transferred and Google Maps has found the necessary locations. Of course, you can change the zoom, value, and addresses inside the Elementor if you need to. Let's get familiar with the accordion widget. To make it, you need to create an auto layout and sign it as accordion in square brackets. Then create an auto layout frame for each accordion item. What you need to know to do this. The first text in the auto layout will be the title. The second will be the main text. 
You can put a vector icon in the frames, one icon per menu. The icon in the first paragraph will be the expanded state icon, in the second, collapsed. Raster image cannot be added to the accordion. We can also add separators, if needed. Now let's have a look at the accordion in the editor. As you can see, everything is working fine. The form widget has quite a few settings. Let's explore them, but first let's create a form. Let's create an auto layout and sign it as a form in square brackets. Now we can put our fields in the middle of the form. We have three types of fields. First, input fields. They work as follows. We set up an auto layout and sign it with one of the following options. Text. The field will accept any user text. Tell. The field will recognize phone numbers. URL. The field for links. Number. The field for numeric values. Date. The field for selecting dates. Time. To choose the time. Email. To recognize email. We can also write an asterisk if we want the field to be required. The second type of field is a checkbox. We create an auto layout and sign it as a checkbox in square brackets. Then we can put our values. They must be in the auto layout and in square brackets. The third type is the radio. It is similar to the checkbox. We write the radio in square brackets, then we put them selection options in square brackets. Now let's see how our form works in the Elementor. All of our field types work as they should. That's great. One more clarification. The text we write in the middle of the email option, for example, is a placeholder. If you want a field without a placeholder, just don't write the text. No page design can do without buttons. How do you make them for the Elementor? Easy. We have a text layer. Press Shift A to create an auto layout. I will indent the height and width. Now let's sign our auto layout as button in square brackets. Great, our first button is created. Now let's create a button with an underscore. Copy our first button, add a stroke, leave only the stroke at the button. Done. Now let's create a button with full strokes. Rotate the strokes on all sides, rotate the indents, and rotate the corners a bit. Instead of a stroke, you can make a button with a fill. We can also add vectors to the button. We recommend to add vector layers without groups, frames, and components to improve export stability. Simply drag and drop the vector into the button auto layout. It can be on the left or on the right, respectively. Now let's prepare buttons for export. Create a generic auto layout. I will make it fixed and set a width to 1440 pixels. I will also center the buttons horizontally and vertically in the auto layout panel and give them a flexible distance for better responsiveness. You can make this adjustment to fit your own needs. Now create auto layout for auto layout. Change its direction to vertical and alignment to top center. This template is ready to be exported. Now let's move to the Elementor. Since our first buttons with white text, they are not visible on a white background. I'll change their color to red right in the Elementor. Now let's figure out why we are missing icons. Just save the page with Ctrl S and reload it. Our icons are back in place. All buttons are clickable. In preview mode they look like this. Great! Let's move on to the next widget. Now create a gallery widget. Let's look at an example. The name of the auto layout should start with the characters gallery in square brackets. 
If you need a lightbox, you should also add lightbox in square bracket. Auto layout can contain columns and rows. We sign them that way for clarity. The plugin itself recognizes the direction of the gallery. Don't worry about that. We recommend to set auto layout gallery with size hook or fixed. That way the widget will look better. Now look at the widget in the Elementor. All photos are properly detected. On the widget with lightbox, lightbox works. Great! We are very glad that you watched our tutorial in full and are interested in our product. Right now we offer a lifetime subscription to our plugin at an incredibly nice price on the platform Absumo. We will leave the link in the description to the video. We always welcome your feedback and really want to talk to you. Leave your feedback in the comments and subscribe to definitely see our next tutorials. In the meantime, we wish you a good day. Bye!